we're holding on 9B3. 9B3. We're holding in the right-hand column, um, right on top, where the, we got to the two dots, where we, we were talking about Villanatia, which is that on the on Rosh Hashanah, the first day of Tishrei is the new is the Rosh Hashanah for saplings. What are we talking about? We're dealing with the din of Arla and Neta Ravai. Arla says the first three years that you plant something, your its fruits are usher to you, are forbidden. The true tree is taking root, it's growing, we let it go on its own. The fourth year has a din of neta revai, that the fruits are sanctified automatically and have to be brought up to Yerushalayim to be eaten, very similar to Meiser Shani. And then by year five, it's a freebie. This Gemara over here is first going to ask, how do I know that the Rosh Hashanah, the turn of the year, is Tishrei, not Nisan? Number two, the Gemara is going to say, what is a year? If I plant this on the 29th of Adar and it turns into Nisan, or I plant it on the 29th day of Elul and the next day is Tishrei, are we already in the second year of the three year? Arla and the second year towards Neta Ravai, or no? And while we're on the subject, is this a fact? Is this a fact that the Rosh Hashanah for saplings, for Arla, for Netia, for saplings, is either Rosh Hashanah, meaning the first day of Tishrei, or Chaydish Nisan, the first day of Nisan? Whatever happened to Tuba, Tuba Shvat, the 15th of Shabbat, which of course, as we know, is the Rosh Hashanah Li'ilonah, is for fruits and all that. So we're only 9B3, Jeff, we're only 9B3, but in the right-hand column, and again, we're talking about the rules of Arla and Neta Rabbi. Our law is, again, when you plant something new, you got three years in which you're not allowed to eat the fruits. The fourth year, the fruits have to be brought up to Jerusalem, to Yerushalayim, in the similar manner as we do with Maishashayim, the second type, where you have to bring it up to Yerushalayim to eat. And so that's the thing. And then we said there's going to be various questions. First, the question is going to be, who said that the Rosh Hashanah, the new year, the turn of the year, is Tishrei and not Nisan? Number two, what is a year? If, let's say, I started planting this on the 29th of Elul, so like the next day is the first of Tishrei, is that already year two in counting the three years of a tree? Or not? Right? All the things that we've got to before. And so this is going to be the Gemara for the next Amit or so. It's also going to start being eventually, maybe not today, but tomorrow and the next day, very esoteric. We're going to be going into Agadita, which is, of course, the legend and the esoteric part of the Gemara, which we learn. We don't always understand. Many times we'll have more questions than answers, but that's because it's the more... It's the more Kabbalistic parts of the Gemara. Anyways, let's begin. It's Ulan and Etiyah. And the first of Tishrei, our Rosh Hashanah, is the what he called the Rosh Hashanahs for the saplings, for the laws of Arla, the three years of Arla. It's mean, how do I know that the first of Tishrei is the new year with regard to Arla? Tixiv. Shloishim Arelim. When you plant a new tree for three years, they should be arelim, forbidden. Uksiv. By the way, oral is the same thing. An uncircumcised person is called an oral. It's the same thing. Incomplete. Right? Forbidden. Uksiv. Shalai shonim arelim. Three years it shall be arelim forbidden. Viksiv. 
Ubashona Arabis. And in the fourth year, its food, its fruit should be sanctified because in the fourth year it has a din of neta revai, the, the growings, the, the, the neta, the saplings of the fourth year, and they have to be brought up to Jerusalem automatically. And the Gemara said, we all have son of son of Mitishre, and we learn a Gazer Shavu comparison of year to year from the discussion of the month of Tishrei. The Ksiv regarding Tishrei may raise his Ashana from the beginning of the year. They say over there, may raise his Ashana meets Tishrei. So over here, where it says Shaloi Shonim, right? Uba Shana, the Shana Aravis, Shana Shana means Tishrei. Right, the Gemara of Alegma, Shana Shana Minisan, who said that Shana means Tishrei. I can show you another passage where Shana means Nisan, Dixiv, Reish, Rishon, Hulachem, Lechotchei Ashana. It is the first to you for the months of the year. So you see, the month year is being used for Nisan. So maybe the Rosh Hashanah for the trees. For the for the tree should be Nisan. Says the Gemara, which we had yesterday on a similar vein. Don in Shana Sheini Machadoshim. We're going to derive the law of when a year begins from a we learn it from a Pasik that does not have months written in it. Because regarding Tishrei, it just says Mereshis Hashana from the beginning of the year. And doesn't mention months, then may shano shayni mochadoshim. But the laws that is what it called that all the it also does not have months. Regarding our law, all it says is shaloi shonim, three years. Ubi shana aradis, or in the fourth year, it doesn't mention any months. But aim done it shana shayni mochadoshim, may shana shayni mochadoshim. But we do not derive the laws of fear from something that does not have months in it, which of course is the racist hasana, Mishana Shimachadoshim that does have months written into it, and that is of course Nisan, which says Risha Yulachem the Khotshay Hashana for the months of the year. The comparison is better months year to year than a verse that's year, two months and years. When you have two psukim that seem to be the same thing, you then go ahead and choose the comparison to something that's more like than the other. In this case, the two psukim that only mention years, shana, and don't mention chadoshim, months, are a better fit. Then the one pasuk that only mentions years, Shonim, and the other pasuk that mentions both, Shana V'chaydish. So therefore, we're going to say it's it, uh, 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 our law and that the Rabbi are being compared to Tishrei. Great. Okay. We're now on 9 4 B. 9 4 B. Yitzhak. Yitzhak. Yeah. Just, just a quick question, unless I missed this. So yeah. if a tree was planted in the lul and then Tishrei comes, now we're in the second year. Is, uh, is that correct? Well, is that, 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 that Okay, because that goes back to another thing that we discussed. That's exactly right. All right. Inquiring minds want to know. Now, here's another question to you. If you remember, we even had another argument. Is one day a year? Is 30 days a year? As we're going to see, is two weeks a year? And by the way, what does it mean you plant it? Does it mean when you first plant or when it first roots? Mm. When it first sinks roots? What are we talking about? Uh -huh. Now we're going to get into it. All those questions that you were essentially asking, Tana Rabbana, the right, the Rabbana learned in the price, uh, now right on to it, Echad Anoita, Hamarich, the Echad Amarkit, Erev Shavius, Shloishin Yoy, Lefnei Rosh Hashanah, 
both ones regarding somebody who actually plants a tree or bends a vine and sticks it into the ground or who grafts a branch onto an existing tree in the year before Shemitah, before the seventh year, like the year we're in now, which is a Shemitah year, if this was done 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, 30 days before Tishrei, also Rosh Hashanah, then when Rosh Hashanah comes, it's as if it's considered that a full year has passed to him with regard to Allah. Okay, now it happens to be that it doesn't really matter in this case whether it's before Shvi'as or not before Shvi'as. Okay, as we're going to see, all it means is, first of all, with regard to the din of Arla, if something is planted, okay, right here we just said planted, okay, 30 days before the beginning of Tisha, the turn of the calendar, at the turn of the calendar, we're already in year two. So that means according to this mandiyama, going to this position, what do you need for it to be to equal a year? Not one day, 30 days. So you need to plant it on the first of Elul. And when you get to the first of Tishrei, you're already in year two. Okay. Umut, and now that's the rule with God to other. Now, why did we mention Shvi'as? Because in this case, on the Shvi'as, and they're allowed to be preserved during Shvi'as, they do not need to be uprooted. Why? Because they've already taken root in the sixth year when it was allowed for you to plant. So it was already established in the sixth year, which is the permitted year. So the fact that it's going to continue to grow in the seventh year, that's okay because its initial growth began when? In the sixth year, when you were allowed to plant, as opposed to the seventh year, when you're not allowed to plant. But... But if you planted less than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, you planted on the 15th of Elul, then in fact, when Rosh Hashanah comes to Tishrei, the turn of the calendar, number one for the Orla, for the three-year rule of prohibited fruits, it's not considered a full year. Because you did not plant it 30 days before, so it didn't get a chance to root, to get nourished enough to be to survive on its own. So it's not considered a year. Those 15 days do not add up to one year, and Tishrei becomes the second year. It means you get one long year for our law, 365 days plus the 15 days. Or 354 days if you go with the lunar year plus 15 days. And therefore, since it's not considered a year, and it's attached, therefore, on to next year, it's part of the year that starts in Tishrei because you didn't get to take 30 days to plant it. You plant it within 30, within 30 days of the beginning of the year. And if that beginning of the year is like this year is a Shemitah year, which you're not allowed to plant, says the Gemara, but also the Kaima Mishmias, that these things are not allowed to be left standing in Shemitah. They have to be uprooted. Okay, why? Because when is it really getting its nourishment? It's getting its nourishment and it's rooting when? On Shemitah. That's no good. So what do we learn? To, we learn a few things here. Number one, we don't look specifically at when, when you planted it. It's did you leave enough time in your planting for it to be rooted by the time you turn the year? That's where we're at here. So it's not planting, it's rooting. And the rooting 
is tied to 30 days. And if it's tied to 30 days, you do it 30 days before, then 30 days is a year. And the turn of the candle, candle calendar for our law purposes makes it year two. And for Shvi's purposes, you don't have to rip it up because you had a full year of 30 days that are rooted in the good year, in the sixth year. But if it's less than 30 days, then number one for our law, it's not a year because it doesn't finish rooting until we get the, the next year, until we get the Tishrei. So therefore, it's one long period, and it's not its own year, and we're still in year one. But since we're still in year one, that one year is a Shavir's year, you got to rip it up, because you allowed, you, it turned out you planted for all intents and purposes, not in the sixth year, even though when you planted it, it was the sixth year, but the reality is it rooted at the beginning of the seventh, and that you're not allowed, boom, Rip it up. Okay? Everybody got that? Because now we're on the next uh, um, on today's top. Type Yud. Okay? Now, don't look at the diagrams. Don't even worry about it. Okay? We're going to do this. It's not. We're going to get right through this thing. We're not going to get bogged down in the actual agricultural details. We're going to just get the idea of what's going on here. Now, we I, just, want get, I, I want to get bogged down. Okay. So, Jerry, you'll slow me down. You ready? Here we go. We just said that you need 30 days prior to Rosh Hashanah to turn into a full year that it would be year two for our law and there'd be no problem with Shavius. Okay. This the Gemara says like this. Paris, okay, that obviously that took root. Okay, now we were talking about here, okay? We were talking about here. We were talking about here until this point, the beginning of the of the process. The beginning of the process. When you first planted it. What about the end of the process? Does 30 days equal a year? Does one day equal a year? Uperis netiyazu isurin at kamisha also bishvat. However, even after the Arla and Revai years end, the three years end for Arla, and the fourth year ends for Neta Revai, guess what? At the end of it, Zu is surin ates vishvat. It remains also until the 15th of Shabbat. Until the 15th of Shabbat, because this day on the day of Tu Bishvat, it gets its name Elon. Elon Elon. It gets the name tree. When does it get the name tree? On Rosh Hashanah Ilonois, which is Tu Bishvat. So even though the Rosh Hashanah Linetiois for planting with regard to the beginning of Arla is, is Tishrei, the end requires you to get to Tu Bishvat so that it changes its name from Netia. Neta Revai, right? From, from Neta Revai and Arlo Metia to it switches its name to Elon Tree. It gets a full name of a tree. So again, Paris, even at the end of the three years and even at the end of the four years, Metia Zu Isurin Ad Chamisha Osa Bishvat until we get to Tu Bishvat. Imla Arla Arla. In the case of a tree completing its Arla years, the fruits remain usur as Arla. They can't be used at all until Tu Bishvat. The Imla Revai, Revi, Revai, they're usur as Revai. That means you can only eat them in your roots lion. Okay? Now, we move go. So said, now we're on 10A2. 10A2. Mino Hanimili. 
How do I know this? That they get extended. Arla and Revai. And yes, Jerry, if you're thinking about your growths, if let's say you grew an apple trees in the Negev, right? These laws would absolutely apply to this day. Again, we're on 10A2. And some cited in the name of Rabbianai. Omakra, the Posik that talks about the tree's first three years as Arla, says, ends with Ubashona Haribius. Take a look right on the side. On the side of the Gemara, it brings the Posik. Ubishona Haribius Yiel Kol Piria Kaidish. And in its fourth year, all of its fruits will be holy. Hilulim Lashem, holy to Hashem. Ubashona Hachamishis. And in the fifth year, Toichlu as Pirioi Lahaisib Lachem to Guosai Ani Hashem Lekechem. So, in other words, says the Gemara, Amakra, Ubishona Haradis, in the fourth year. This is right after it talks about. And, and and right after it mentions about Neta Revai, it says Ubashona Hachamishis in the fifth year. The Gemara then darshins Pa'amim Shever Revi Vadayin Asurim Bishamarla. There are times when a tree is actually in its fourth year and still at the prohibition of Arla, like it's still within the three years. And sometimes we get to the fifth year of Adayin Esurim Mishum Revoi. And there are times when it's still prohibited as Neta Revai. Why? Because you have to wait, even though the turn is Rish Chaydish Tishrei, you still have to wait for two Bishvat. Or for it to switch its name to Elon, to tree. So now, let's stop right over here. Till now, we are dealing with an idea that it takes 30 days. A year, it's true. Let me start from the beginning. When we're counting the years of the king, the reign of the king, one day is a year. Nobody's arguing. Comes king on the 29th of Adar. His son is here too. A non-Jewish king becomes king on the 29th of El. Tishrei is year two for the non-king, for the non-Jewish king. When it comes to fruits, Tishrei is the turn for our law from year one to year two. But that is not 100% true. That's only if I planted it 30 days before. It had 30 days to root. So when I get to Tishrei, I'm in year two of Arba. If you did it less than, you planted it less than 30 days to Tishrei, it doesn't get a chance to root. We just said right now, no, it's not its own year. It's one longer year. It's a full, you're going to have to take a full year from Tishrei all the way to the other Tishrei, plus the 15 days that you planted in 15th of El the year before. It doesn't become its own year. Right? That's what we said. Because 30 days when it comes to plants, when it comes to trees, equals a year. That's what the Tanakhama says. That's what the Rabbanon said. When it comes to trees, it's different. It's not when it plants. It didn't root. You rooted it, you need 30 days to root for it to equal a year. But it says the Gemara, that is not universally agreed to. Let's say that that price of 30 days equals a full year and anything less than 30 days is not a full year with regard to trees. It's not according to Rameyer. The e what do, you, what, do you, what do you see as the difference between planting and rooting? Okay, let's keep going. Jerry, hold that question. Let's work our way down 
and then let's come back to it. The Ira Mayor Ha'ama, because believe it or not, the Gemara is about to have an uh, about to have an argument on exactly that question. The Ira Mayor Ha'ama Yoim Echot Bishono Choshib Shono that a single day in a year is legally regarded as a full year. Period. That's it. The Tanya, just like by kings, he's going to bring proof from animals. A bull that's mentioned in the Torah without the Torah specifically mentioning names. I mean, age, not names. Without the Torah giving it an specific age, it says it says par ben bokar, a par a cow ben bokar from an animal, right? Ben it, it automatically the assumption is ben esim ba'bo chodesh v'yoyim echad. It's at least twenty four months, two years, in other words, and one day old. In other words. Three years old is Stama Behema. But what's the minimum of three years? Two years, 24 months, and one day. Divre Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir says, how old is the year then? One day. You get into the third year of an animal by getting one day into that third year. Rabbi Elezer, I bet? No. Ben Esim Abach, this twenty-four months, two years. Who slice him in thirty days? Okay, that's what it is. Right there, you clearly see the Rameya holds one day is a year. That's the rule across the board for kings, for kings, for animals, for sacrificial animals, and and therefore for our law, one day. That's it. And Rabbi Eloza says, no. By, for kings, I'll grant it to you. But when it comes to stuff, not people, objects, the animals need 30 days to equal a full year to get them into their third year. And Arla needs 30 days to be get to, to, for it to be added, to be considered a complete year. We're now on 1083. 1083. So now, the, and, the, and now we're going to explain. The Bryce is going to explain. Because I made it said with regard, they use the word that the art scroll uses. The bovines, the animals, the part, the porous. Ramey used to say, Every time it says calf in the Torah, without saying ben bakar, that it's of cattle, it doesn't use the word of cattle, ben shana. It means, it means what it called a one year old. That means in its first year, in its first year. If you want to see that, what it called in the first year. In other words, you now on the eighth on the eighth day that an animal is born, you're allowed to shecht it. You're allowed to sacrifice. Okay, and when the Torah said. Ben Bakar, Eagle Ben Bakar, a calf, Ben Bakar of cattle, then it really means Ben Stein. It refers to a two year old. Par, when an animal is called a bull, automatically it means Ben Shalash, a three year old. But that means just like a one year old means that on the eighth day of its existence, an eighth day that it's on this earth, it's now allowed to be slaughtered. It means in the year, Ben Bok, Ben Shana means within the first year. Ben Steinem means within the second year. And the third one is in the third year. The perfect example of this is, as you know, a child turns one, we throw him a birthday party, Right, we throw our grandkids a party because they turned one years old. The reality it's a misnomer. They're actually starting their second year. 
they are already won. They already went through a first year and they're beginning a second year. It's just that we count the years at the end of the year. The reality is, right, I am 54, Bali Ayanar. But the truth is, I'm already in my 55th year. Right? The number 54 is a misnomer. It's actually the wrong way. We're counting at the end of the year. When a child is born, we should immediately throw a party and say, you're, on your, you're in your first, what do you call it? You're one years old. You're in your first year. By, uh, right? But we don't do that. We count from the end. So this is what he's saying over here. It means within the year. So therefore, St. Sarmaya is clearly talking about within the year. It means one day of a year equals a year. That's it. As long as I get into that thing. And my birthday is July 29th. The moment I get to July 30th, I'm already in my 55th year. That's what it means. Exactly over here. When it means that the, an animal, an eagle by itself, is a bend, son is one year old, it means within its first year, which we know there's a rule that the first seven days you're not allowed to slaughter an animal, but by the eighth day you're allowed to slaughter the animal. When it says ben, ben Bokar, it means Ben Stein, a two year old means in its two, second year. But par means in its third year, meaning two full years. And one day into its third year. Boom. So we see from this Baraisa so that Amaya regards a single day as a year. Since Abaraisa does not regard anything less than 30 days as a year with regard to planting. And I've been saying the word rooting. Right? It cannot be in accordance with Rameya. Says the Gemara. Daddy, we're on 1083. A3. Right. Okay. Okay. Very good. And we're on the right hand column. It can either be Rameya. Our Baraisa. And Jerry, listen to this. Our Baraisa. Which says 30 days equals a year with regard to planting. That if you want to get the year two of our law and you don't want to have to rip it up if it's Shemitah, it needed to have been planted 30 days before. At least that's where we're standing now. I, Rameo, holds one year. One day is a year. Kikoma Rameo, Yoimechad Bishon. 10, 10, 8, 3. 10, 8, 3. 10, 8, 3. 10, 8, 3. What? Omid Aleph, you say. Omid Aleph, Omid Aleph. Yeah, 10, 8, 3. Okay. I feel like Rameyer, even if you want to say it's Rameyer, ki koma Rameyer, yoy mechad b'shono, choshub shono. When does Rameyer say that one day equals a full year? B'shoi b'shono, at the end of the year. At the end of the cycle. So when it says par, or whatever it is, it's what he calls the end of the cycle. But at the beginning of the series, a single day is not a year. Our deals with the opening year of our law. In this case, even Rameya will agree that a single year does not suffice. That in a single day does not suffice. You need more because when it comes to our law, it's different than kings. It needs rooting. It needs to, and it's not simply the planting. It needs to get roots and start getting nutrients. Amarava. Belav Kalbukaimu. But wait a minute. I've got a Fortori argument that says the other way. Umanido, a menstrual woman. And this is the halacha. When she's counting seven clean days, the last day of the seven days, we do not say that part of a day is like a whole day. But in fact, 
she has to be clean and not see any blood the entire seventh day. But nonetheless, when counting the seven days, we're on 10 A4, when, start, when she starts seeing her menstrual cycle, when she starts seeing blood, let's say she sees it at five o'clock in the afternoon, right before it gets dark. The answer is, we say it's a full day. In other words, she doesn't have to count eight days. She only has to count six days plus one hour. So at the beginning, we say mix asayon kikuloi. That part of a day is is what do you call it? Is like a full day. So the trigger is getting started. Doesn't matter when, as long as it's in the day. So by the time you get to the night, you're up to day two. But at the end. At the end, on the seventh day, you got to have the whole day. Shana, then in the case of years, says Rava, where a single day does count as a full year at the end of the cycle. That's what we just said. Rameya holds, Rameya holds, Rameya holds, yeah, one that day. at the end of the cycle, one day is good enough. We just said that a par is a, a, an animal in the third year. That's 24 months plus one day. That's it. As long as you get into your third year, you're a three-year-old with regard to sacrifices, right? We a single day counts as a full year at the end of the cycle, as opposed to Nido. Which As is now. To, which at the end, you need the full day. You need the full seventh day. It Not means... part of the seventh day is clean. Now we're on other days and be one. Then isn't it logical to say that the beginning, which by our law, by planting, right, we say it should also be counted. Isn't it logical to say that a single day should count as the full day at the beginning? If Rameh if regards at the end of the series as a full year, even though by Nido we don't, then certainly he should count at the beginning a one day as a full year at the beginning, like we do do by Nido. So it's a very good argument. And Nido is a Diaraisa Dikadin. The menstrual cycle is biblical in nature. Our law is biblical in nature. So just like by the menstrual cycle, the beginning of the cycle, a part of a day, is good enough to be an entire day. But the end of the cycle, you require a full day and not part of a day. If I, Rameo, hold it at the end by the trees and by the animals, if one day is good enough for a year, then certainly at the beginning of the cycle, I should definitely hold it. Just like I need to where it exists, that you only need part of it. Okay? Says the Gemara, Elamai. So what are you going to say? So it turns out, if Rav, therefore Abarai said, definitely cannot be Rameir. So says the Gemara, Elamai, you want to say to Rabbi Eloza that, okay, Abarai is like Rabbi Eloza. Rabbi Eloza held that an animal, a par in its third year, has to be 24 months plus 30 days. Right? Because 30 days equals a year. That's it. You want to say that's the case. Ah, but then in that case, when it comes to planting, you would need 60 days before. Shloishim be shloishim boyi. You would need to have 30 plus 30 days before Rosh Hashanah. That means not that you planted it on the first of El, but that you planted it on the first of um. Why? Very simple. 30 days for the tree to take root. And then after it takes root, right? Then you need 30 days from the time it takes root to equal a year, according to Rabbi Elazar. Because you need you 30 need, days. You need another 30 days to be moist. Because Jerry, planting a tree by itself is meaningless if it doesn't take roots. It's when it's rooted 
it's now in. Now you should need another 30 days. And if I tell you it needs 30 days to root, then I need to do it from of Rashkhadish up to Rashkhadish Shalom. And now I need another 30 days to go from Rashkhadish Shalom to Rashkhadish Tishrei. <coughs> so I need 60. So now I got nobody who's like Abraisa, because Abraisa certainly did not say that. Abraisa simply said 30 days before Tishrei, it's good to go. And if it's not 30 days before Tishrei, it's not good to go. It's not because we learned in the Mishnah in Shavir's Einoitin the Einach Mavrichin the Einmar of Kivin Erev Shavir's. We do not plant the tree. We do not bend the vine and stick it into the gravel, graph a branch in the year before Shavir's. Pachos Mishloishim Yoyin Lefnei Rosh Hashanah. Less than thirty days before Rosh Hashanah, because once again. If you do it less than 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, when is it going to root? It's going to actually root in the seventh year. In the seventh year, you're now allowed to plant. Planting is the definition, rooting, right? If, if it roots in the seventh year, you got to rip it up, right? The im not of the but if one did plant or layer the vine or graft the branch during less than 30 days before the start of Shemitah, Yaakov, you got to rip it up. Different Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Yehuda, Imel, Rabbi Yehuda says, Kol Arbei Kovosh Eine Koiletes Bishloi Shemyonim Any grafting that does not take hold in three days does not take hold in three days, shuv, any kalatesh, will never root, will never take hold. In other words, it says Rabbi Yehuda, I'm arguing with your basic premise. You mean only three days. I don't hold that it takes 30 days to root. I hold it only takes three days to root. In other words, it's a scientific argument. Vaccinated or not vaccinated. Very simple, right? That's what it is. Does it take 30 days to root or does it take three days to root? And along comes Rabbi Yaisim and Rabbi Shimon Ibrahim. Rabbi Yaisim and Rabbi Shimon says, stay Shabbosah, it's two weeks. It actually takes time for a tree to root, two weeks. So now I've got three opinions. Three days, two weeks, and 30 days. According to the Tanakhama, who says a tree needs 30 days to root, therefore I need 30 and 30. 30 days for the tree to take root, and 30 days that are added that three days that are added from the one day to the holy, which we learned about yesterday. We always... Need 60 read. days. And how much is the type? It's 30 days. The day according to the one who says three days are needed, Rabbi Yehuda, who says three days are needed to take root, I need 33 days. Three days to root and 30 days to be by Siv Chol Ala to add on the holy, uh, the, the, the mundane onto the holy. And according to the one who says you need two weeks, I need 14 days. I need 44 days. I need 44 days, two weeks to root, and 30 days to be So we see. That trees need 30 days to root. So according to Rabbi Lezhi, you can't count the final 30 days of the year as a full early year unless the tree was actually sent to the ground 60 days before Yodas Yashoda. From Ab to Elul to root, then it's in. And now I'm being moistened on the tree is four months. So Ab Raisa said you only need 30 days. Ab Raisa clearly is not Rabbi Eloso. So who's Abarais to like? The Enami Kirabi Yehuda Srila. So if you want to say it's like Rabbi Yehuda, that holds it only takes three days to root. Now we're on 10B2. 10B2. 
right? Says the Gemara, then in that case, the Abraiser should have said, you need 33 days, three days to root, and then the 30 days to be to get the extra month in prior to Shavir's. Ella li oilam rameya. Going it rather up. Rice is really a coin to rameya. Ah, rameya says one day equals a year. Viki kama shaloishin. And weird when our rice says that the tree must be planted thirty days before Rosh Hashanah. How could it be like rameya likalita? In other words, 30 days are needed for it to take hold, to root. And then Ramea says, once it's rooted, once it's rooted, we need one day, and boom, I've got a year. So pray to Gamari Yachi, if that's true, then it's not 30 days, it's 31 days. 30 days to root, and one day, like of the equal a year, according to Ramea. Kasava, Yon Shleishim, Oila Lekan, Ulekan, that the 30th day in the morning, the tree fully roots. And Ramey, it says, the rest of the day is used for your year. And that's it, and we're good to go. The reality, just like by the kings, if the king starts <coughs> his reign on Chopdal and Adar, the Jewish king's year switches on Rosh Chodesh Nisan to year two. A Gaius king, a Gentile king. Chavtes Elul is year one if he begins his reign. And Chav and 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 Rosh Hashanah Rosh Chodesh Tishrei is year two. Very good. So now the Gemara is going to go through. How do I know? Ready? Call less than a year is a full year. Whether it's a mayor, it's one day. Whether it's Rabbi Yehuda, it's three days. Whether it's the Tanakama, it's 30 days. Whether it's Rabbi Elizabeth of Shimon, that it's two weeks. How does everybody notice? Right? We were just taking it for granted. How does everybody notice? Jerry, before we begin this, because we've got another 10 minutes here. Jerry, you, 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 you're back to your question. Jerry is still uh, Jerry is still there, right? I hope so. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Right. So your question: It is clear as day, according to everybody, planting by itself is meaningless, unless unless it roots in, and it could it could survive on its own. It's not thing. And you know where you see this? We just said an animal has to be eight days old before you're allowed to slaughter it. Why? Because we say the first seven days it's not yet viable. We don't know if the if the if the if the calf was born with an with an internal with an internal defect. It could be a so nafel. It could be a nafel, exactly. It still has the din of a miscarriage. Up to day eight. The logic behind it is not the planting or giving birth. Even a child, a human child has anybody ever thought about it's one thing to say when do we give the bris milah on day eight the circumcision is on day eight why not day one because until day eight we're not sure the child is viable same thing like an animal no different but I'll tell you further why aren't we paide? why don't we, we redeem a newborn child until the 30th day. Why do we do a pity in our bed? Redemption of a firstborn son. Of course, I've never done it because I'm a lady, right? And my children don't do it because they're vas But for those who are Israel, they do a pity in our bed if their first child is a boy. And if they didn't have a, and if the child wasn't born by a C-section and if there was no miscarriage beforehand. So it's, it's, not, so, it's not so common. Having said that, okay, why do we wait to the 30th day? Because the truth of the matter is, the Gemara brings out in many places. When it comes to money, a transfer of money, it has to be, you have to know for sure that it's viable. And it actually, a child, even though for a bris milo, you could do it on day eight, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't take on full viability until it reaches day 30. 
That's and that's that's the lot. It's all here. It's the same logic. So, base, so basically, yeah, what we call the, a shishil, a shishil, a shishil, yeah. which is a plantling that you start from seeds in a um, in a greenhouse operation. That basically, it's not it's not considered anything until it's basically in the ground itself, and basically has its couple days there. And I'll even tell you further. Do you know that if you plant things in a flower pot? And that's why I'm interested you mentioned a greenhouse. If you plant things in a flower house plot, it's not considered Arla at all. I know. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's well, why that, a greenhouse, a greenhouse is a very interesting shaila in Aloha. And hydro. And, and hydro planting the same thing. And hydro planting for sure. Hydro planting for sure. It's the, the shaila is just so anybody else should understand it. A greenhouse is a greenhouse just one big large flower pot? Is that how you want to look at a greenhouse? Or do you want to say no, it's just a different version of really planting? That may or may not be so. And certainly hydraulic, where you don't do it at all, right, is clearly not that. So it's a very interesting shiling aloha, especially in modern agriculture. This may not apply at all. Exactly. But why wouldn't it apply? Because of this very interesting idea, the difference between planting and rooting. And it's very clear from our Gemara, rooting is the is the market in is it's the final nail. Vertical it's, agriculture. Vertical agriculture. And that's why I told you, you had to wait until we go through this whole Gemara to see it clear as day that it's not planting, it's rooting that's underlying this whole argument. Let's just go a little further. I want to be on the dial. Okay, we got uh, about uh, four more minutes till a quarter after. Oh, my Rabbi Yochanan, Ushanayim, Rabbi Elezer, Rabbi Rabbi that says it's one day. Rabbi Elezer that says 30 days equals a year. Rabbi says one day is a year. Ushanayim and Mik Mikra Echadosh. They're actually both arguing in how much is a year. They're both learning it out of one posse. The posse says like this. When we had it in last in two weeks ago, it's Pash and Pasha's Noyak. After the marble stopped, it's a very interesting lawsuit. By here it was. Ba'achas the Sheish Maya Shana. And we're one and six hundred years. That means in the six hundred and first year, Barishan, in the first month, the Echad La Khaidish. That means Rosh Khaidish Nisan, the Pashtas. The water had dried from the earth. From the fact that it was only one day. Because what did we just say? It was Nisan, the first day of the first month. And how many years did we say? One and six hundred. So we're counting the six hundred and first year, even though the waters disappeared when? On the first day of the new year. Says Jermaine. We see that a single day that entered into the 601st year. Because Kari Shana is called the year. That one day in the year is called the year. The Edoch and Rabbi Lezu says 30 days. Says like this, and now we're on 10b3. 10b3. The Sheish Mayor is the Achat Shona Kidiamid. If it was written 601 years, it would be like you say, 600 and the first year. Hashta the Oma in a very poetic way. The Achat the Sheish Mayor Shona. One and 600 years. Shana Ashesh Meizkoy. The word here is, is only going on the 600. Umay Akas. And what's the one? Ashkalta the Akas come out telling us that we're beginning the 601st year. But not that it's the six, we're beginning that 601st year. Not that it's counted as a full year. The Rabbi Eliezer, my time. Rabbi Eliezer, what is Yeah, read? but uh, if you say, one and six hundred. Right. That means that the one came first, right? Yeah, ah, right. So, so we said before that the the the, 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 the 
It's not counted. It's not, you do count it. You're not counting, but I'm not counting it as a year, according to Rabbi Eliezer. According yeah, to Rabbi Eliezer, no, I'm, I'm talking to the Torah mayor. According to Rabbi Eliezer. So, so Rabbi Eliezer doesn't, Rabbi, Rabbi doesn't Rabbi, agree with it, but so we went away from that. If you remember, we went away from that idea. We ended up saying Rameo holds because there was a Kalvachaima. Kalvachaima to Nido. We yeah. went away from that and we said it is one day. It just needs 30 days to root. Right. You have to plant it 30 days earlier because you need it to root. Once it yeah. roots, the day yeah. that it roots is also the one day of its year and right. it equals a full year. So, in fact, Rameo went away from it. Ula Rabbi Loza my What's the date? The Ksiv, the Rishon, the Echad Chaydish. It's written in the first month on the on the first of the month. <clears throat> From the fact that it's still only one day that is entered into the first month. And what does the Pasik call it? The Kari Le Chaydish, and the Pasik calls it a month. Shmami no, Yoim Echad the Chaydish Koshim Chaydish means that a single day of a month is considered a month. Therefore, one full month equals a full year. And a month is counted according to its units a day. And a year is counted to each unit a month. In other words, what do we say a month is? 30 days. What do we say a year is? 12 months. That's where we go. Mechlal. From here we see the Tavayu Sviru Benisa Nivra Oilam. From here both come across that the world was created in the month of Nisa. The Tanya, because we learned. Rabbi Elezoi, man, now we're getting esoteric. The Tishrei Nivra Oilam. In Tishrei, the world was created. It's talk you mute you're muted, I think. Am I back, am I back on? This is yeah, yeah. Content. Now you're okay. This is, we're really actually gonna stop right here, but since we have everybody, I want to talk about this. Anya, Rabbi Eleza, Oimer Rabbi Eleza says, Vitishre Nivra Hoilam. In Tishre, the world was created. Everybody take a look at number 25 in the art scroll. Everybody see 25 in the art scroll? What is the first line over here? This refers to the sixth day of creation upon which man was formed. In other words, everybody, our count. Now, everybody can stop looking. This is what I wanted to talk about. Our count of Tov Shin Pei Beis, 5,782 years, starts from when? When the Odom Arishan was created. In Tishrei, Nivra Ha'olam. In Tishrei, in the month of Tishrei, on the first of Rosh Hashanah, the world was created. That means, <coughs> the rain, Give me one second. Oh, I need to go get a Chumash, but okay. What do you call? Beresh is Bora Elikim. In the beginning, God created, therefore, when was that? That was obviously five days before. Right? If the words Betishrei Nibro Oilam mean on the world was created on the first of Tishrei, that means when was the actual voracious Barlakim in the beginning God created? When was that? Five days earlier, on the 25th of Elul. Or as we're going to see, there's another argument to say that man was created on the first of Nisan. So five days earlier would be the 25th of Adar. Yeah, Adar. But we, count, we count from the creation of Odom I know that. I know that. So daddy, how old is the universe? Our count of 5,782 years is only from Bayerev 
Vayivoike Yoim Hashishi. It was an evening, it was a right. day, the sixth day, and God went and pressed the clock. So the first thing is, what's time? Time, as we know, in a very simple way, is the movement of two matters, one against the other. It's a clock. It's a clock, one wheel turning one way, one wheel turning the other way. And the earth revolves around itself, revolves on its axis over a 24 hour period. It goes around the sun 365 days. So in other words, it's the movement of one matter against another matter that's actual time. So time is a physical construct. So the example would be, is time and age. I hope everybody has a few minutes here. Jerry, Jeff, Daddy, you all have like 10 minutes here? Because this You're is good. Gonna talk about fascinating stuff. Aging. I, I, I don't have 10 minutes. I have a Zoom meeting with Rabbi Ganak with Melbourne, Australia, and Israel. So uh, I might. Uh, yeah. Okay, if you drop well, out. If you drop out, call me later in the day. We'll go over this. It's fascinating. It. Just sit around until you can. The difference between aging and time. Time is a physical construct. Aging is not. So when in the times of Yeshua over Yerichai, over Jericho, the Navi brings down, the prophets bring down that the sun froze in the sky so that he could continue fighting more hours. That meant that time stopped. It was 12 o'clock for six extra hours. So time stopped. Did everybody else get older? Yes, they did. Of course you get older. People depreciate. It doesn't, has nothing to do with time. Aging and time are first of all, two separate ideas. They may look the same because we look at life as linear, but in fact, time is a physical construct of one matter against another. Aging is an automatic in the thing. Fascinating to think about that. Now, when was the clock created? Daddy, do you have a chumash over there? I can get one. If you get a chumash and just read us in English the art school, day four of the creation. Okay? Yes. Okay? Very, okay? Now, this is important. God created the world. On day four, it's very interesting, the language. Daddy, if you don't mind, can you read us day four? Getting to it. Read it in English, okay? So if it jumps off the page in English, even better. So what do you want to know about day four? Read the first Pasuk of day four. Right. Vayemir Elokim. Yeah, so does read it in English. Read it in English. Read it in English. Oh, in English? In English. All right. God said, let there be luminaries in the firmament in, of the heaven to separate between the day and the night. And they shall serve as a sign and for festival and for days and years. And they stop. shall... Stop. stop. Who needs signs? Who needs festivals? Who needs days? Who needs years? Yeah. This was the first inkling that people were coming. <clears throat> the only ones who need festivals are people. The only ones who need signs are people. Yes, the so it's idea, good. It's the, good idea, the idea, it was the That first, was the purpose of those of this ah, thing. In other words, it was the first foreshadowing that people were coming. And who needs, it tells us, And the, I'm sorry, we got a call. That the idea, the idea, the idea of days 
and 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 years. That means 24 hours, 365 days, as it were, was a creation on day four. So right away, the first question is, how long were the first three days? Number two, who was this created for? It was created for man. If you look at Shani, you'll see over there, the Pusik says something very interesting, that there was no man yet to plant, to grow. Rashi explains that God created everything and he put everything in status. In other words, it was created at the surface of the earth. It was all frozen. Why? Because there was no man to plant and cry out and pray for rain and appreciate rain to come. And there was the idea that you should pray and be misfollow so that you should appreciate what you have. Right. In other words, Everything was put into status. What it called was put into status, right? Everything was put into status. Static. 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 Thank you. So, in other words, time did not begin. The 24 hour day, seven days a week, 365 days did not begin until man arrived. And when man arrived, we learn that other Marisha, the first man was born, <clears throat> at twilight of the sixth day. And look what he got. He was created. He had major surgery, had got married, had kids. Was he committed his sin. And he was able to name all the animals, was able to do the Avera of the eight Sadats, to eat from the tree of knowledge, get kicked out, Go ahead and compose Mizmer Shili and Meshavas. Heck of a twilight. The answer is time. You know the first time the Torah uses the word time? Elu toildais Adam biyaymi bara. These are the times of man on the day that he was created. The answer, therefore, everybody is. And the Gemara is saying it. Man was born on the on Tishrei or Nisan, which is when we start counting 5,782 years. But before man was created, before the earth time was set into motion, first, this first, this universal time. First, there is universal time because first God created the universe. So now we got two separate things. We all know from our great Mr. Einstein, good Gemara Cup, right? Good Gemara Cup, what do you call it? Get good old Albert Einstein, that time is relative. Which, what does that mean, time is relative? That the gravitational pull has an effect on time. How fast you move. So, here's the question. If you could stand at the edge of the ever-expanding universe, okay, with all its gravitational pull and all its theoretical black holes, etc., and all its galaxies, and you take all of that gravity and everything, how much time, what's the difference in time moving for the entire universe? Versus, versus time on Earth. Obviously, Earth time is going to go a lot faster. Could be trillions of years. Uh, it, actually, Daddy, there's a formula. The formula is 13 billion Earth years equals seven days of the universe. Exactly. Where do you get this formula? It, it's, I'll, I'll, I have to dig it up. In fact, Daddy, you figured it out in the early 1980s. Because when I started coming to this as a teenager, you told me then, ha, ah, it's like I figured this out of it. Right? So, so, it turns out, therefore, that evolution is certainly possible because the evolution of the universe 
could be 13 billion years. Because the first five and a half, five days and three quarters, we don't count. Right. Which we count from day six by year by Kishi. The first five and three quarter days is universe time. The whole idea of human time wasn't even created until the fourth day. And it was put in static until what do you call it? Until humans arrived and everything was and Shabbos arrived. It turns out, therefore, that the formula was in regard to Einstein's theory, it's about 13 billion years on Earth, equaling about seven days in the universe. If that's the case, there are no questions. In fact, it apparently the Gemara takes it as a double order. The Gemara takes it as a given. It says the art school refers to the sixth day, the sixth day of creation, because that's exactly what it does. It's Abenu Bachaya, it's the Mashah, it's Poishis and the Ding. Everybody takes it for granted. Because you know why? In the words of Rav Sack, the Chainal of Racha, it was easy for Hashem to create the universe. It took him all of 35 psukim. Man, on the other hand, <laughs> it took about 100 psukim and process voracious because the universe is simple. Man is very complex. Man is yeah. very complex. That's a Dutch difference. And the Torah HaKadosha is not interested in the Bria. The Torah HaKadosha is interested in people. It's right. not interested in the building. It's what you do with the building. The Torah is interested in the morals, in morality. And morality is about people. It's not interested in the what. It's interested in the why. Not what was created. Why was it created? That is the huge difference. What purpose it was created? What was the purpose? In other words... To say it's not purposeful means there was no purpose to the whole thing. The Torah right. says the universe is the universe. We don't count it. It's not in our count. You know what we're counting when we say 5,782 days and years? We're counting us. We're counting us, the purpose of the creation. Not the yeah. creation itself. The creation itself could have been 13 billion years ago. It doesn't matter. That's what it is. Anyways, that's the Gemara that we're going to start on tomorrow. Very good, Lisa. Very good. That, thank you, Daddy, for joining because that's what I wanted to get to. Right? Uh, very right good. Here. And it's right here. It's the Gemara. I'm not making this stuff up. It's a Gemara. No, it's you're right. right. It's right there. Why does the Gemara go out of the way? It says it's the sixth day. And it takes it as a double borrower. There was no time before before the creation of man. No create, before man, the clock didn't the clock wasn't even created till day four. So how right. long were the first three days? But in fact, the clock didn't get started. You have to turn the knob and press the button. The That's button right. was by Yerva Shishi. Until then, besides that, besides that, why would you even need it before creation? You, you don't need it. That's what I say. Who, yeah. needs, who needs days? Who needs years? Who needs signs? Who needs festivals? It's a meaningless thing. On day four, it was meaningless. The idea, the concept was there for a people that were going to require it. That was the first inkling we were showing up. But until then, it was all in a state of flux. And in fact, and once you get to that, and you're going to see, you know, you know, we talk about a, a evolution in the sense of evolving. The Gemara in other places brings it for granted. It says people in cold places their bones get thicker. People who live in the desert, they, uh, their feet get wider so they can walk better. Right? The Gemara takes it. Walk well, on the soft sand. Right? The Gemara takes it as a double barter. Of course people evolve to their environment. Right? It's not, it wasn't even a caution to them. So in other words, it's like I said, the Big Bang Theory is not Darwin. It's the first Ramban in the Torah. He talks about Hilui. Apparently the Greeks had the idea, right? Of a fission, of a fission explosion. He write, what does the Rabban write? 
that Hashem created a particle so small, it was almost nothing, but packed with so much energy, and then, boom, everything was created, and that was it. And after that, Hashem was just mavdal, Hashem just separated. He separated this, he attached this, it's a Ramban. And you know what the Ramban says? Dover poshinu borer. Let me just tell you something that's simple and obvious. And this is what he says. It's right there in the first Pesach in the Torah. 800 years before Darwin ever showed up. Someone must have learned the Ramban with Darwin. So he just took it. He wanted to take God out of the equation. So he added, so he, what he called, plug, 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 plug it in. And the Ramban takes it like it's easy. Anyway, 